Hi, I'm Luke, the Hard Times Guy. Today I want to talk to you about some video I found. Found a little clip of video. I think it's 24 seconds long. And I'm just the first thing I'm going to do is just show it to you. Uh, let you look at it, and then I'm going to talk to you about it a little bit. I'm going to tell you that's Mike Bridwell. In a minute here, and there's Tommy Woodward. And that's my wife Betty. And we're in our home. I think we lived, I think that's on 13th Street, or on U Street, when we lived on U Street. And Mike's getting a haircut. Okay, you saw that video. And you saw two friends of mine, and I'll say that those two fellas, they're both dead now. Mike died when he was 58. Probably the official cause of his death was heart attack. Uh, real cause of his death was at least uh, self-abuse. by some bad habits that he had and you know there might be a couple other reasons that I could attribute to it but I'm not going to. Then Tommy he lived longer than Mike did but he died too young as well he had cancer. Both of them dear friends of mine I loved them both. I miss them both. In this little video, this little precious 24 seconds of video that I found from some stuff I took in, this, in the early 1970s, uh, I have captured the essence of Tommy Woodward and one very... Uh, significant attribute of Mike Bridwell. And I want to talk about those two things for just a minute today. In this little clip of Tommy, of course he's there and he's watching Betty cut Mike's hair and uh, of course Mike looks pretty ridiculous during the whole thing. Uh, things that Betty's doing with his hair and then later when she puts him under the hair dryer. And Tommy's just really enjoying that and having fun. And that is the essence of Tommy Woodward. Tommy Woodward had fun. He enjoyed life. He made other people's lives uh, better by his demeanor and his uh, daily pursuit of happiness. That, that was the essence of Tommy Woodward. And it wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accidental thing that Tommy was like that. He chose to be that way. He chose to live his life like that. And he chose to have a good time and to help those around him enjoy life just like he did. And I'll say this. I never in my life heard anyone say, when talking about Tommy Woodward that they didn't like the guy. In fact, most of the people that you would talk to about Tommy would be just like me. They say, I love that guy. So here in a, I don't know, Tommy's, <laughs> Tommy's on screen time in that video might be four or five seconds, I don't know. I'm going, to, I'm going to play it to you again so you can enjoy it, or I might be playing it as I talk, I don't know. But here he is, probably about 25 to 28 years old in this video, enjoying himself. And I'll say it again, this is the essence of Tommy Woodward. Now Mike... Mike, on the other hand, 
he Mike too was a good a friend as I ever had, just like Tommy. One of my best friends. I'd you know I'd rate him right up there with anybody as far as how I felt about him. I love Mike too. I met Tommy probably when I was about 12 years old. I met Mike when I think I was probably nine years old. Little League Baseball and Boys Club Basketball probably the first two times. We, he went to Stalker School and I went to Lincoln, so we didn't meet at school. But we met through sports, probably at the Boys Club, maybe at the Little League Diamond. Mike was a good baseball player. I wasn't much good at it. But. He was on a, a lot of sports teams and leagues and things like that that I was involved in as a kid and we we knew we've known each other we knew each other from a long long time did a lot of things together hunted together fished together when I was younger I participated in some of his bad habits with him together And I like to tell you that everybody loved Mike the same way I did. But unlike Tommy, that I have met people that don't like Mike, didn't like him. Have bad things to say about him. <laughs> and I can understand some of that too because Mike was an agitator. Uh, he liked to agitate people. He got a great kick out of it. So he had a lot of his fun at someone else's expense. And he enjoyed it. So, not everybody liked Mike like everybody liked Tommy. But still, Mike was my good friend, and I loved him. Now, I don't want to talk about his negative uh, the aspects of how he agitated people and how some people would tell you they didn't like him or they didn't think much of him. What I want to talk about and what's illustrated in this video is how tight he was. And by tight, I mean he squeezed a nickel or a penny for everything it was worth. To get him to pay for something when you're out amongst others, I mean, forget that. Uh, he looked for the best bargain, the cheapest price, and uh, he wasn't cheap. When he bought things for himself, he bought good things, uh, and he would spend money i'm not saying he would never spend any money but boy he hated he hated to turn loose of anything and think that he didn't get it for the absolute bare minimum that he had to pay for and when he sold something he was the exact opposite he thought it was worth twice what it should have been worth and that and tried to do that too on the other side of it he was just tight and he was like that about everything and this video is an illustration of that you know, Betty, when we were young, she was a beautician. And I like to say we were a two-family income, but because I worked too, part of the time. But there was times when I didn't work. Uh, Betty went to work, and I went to the pool room, things like that. Uh, not on purpose, but our life was like that. And she worked real hard when we were young and was, you know, part of what we needed to uh, survive and live life. So a lot of people would say, well, you know, Mike should have given her the business. But he wasn't giving her the business. He came to our house and he did it every time to get a free haircut. That's why he was there, get his hair cut. Heck, it cost him uh, probably two or three dollars to get a haircut in a barber shop. And if he went to a beauty shop, it's going to cost him at least five. But he could come by and say, hey, Betty, I need a haircut. She'd cut his hair. We'd cut up. That's what you're seeing this day. You're seeing Mike get a haircut, a free haircut. He, he never paid for a single time that he ever cut his hair. And you're asking, what did she get? She might have got a thank you, but I'm going to tell you, probably instead of a thank you, when she got on cutting his hair, he said something like, well, Betty, I don't know. I guess that'll work this time. Maybe you can do a little better next time as he looked in the mirror. Then he'd say, I'm hungry. You got anything to eat? Can you make us a sandwich? Because <laughs> he knew that uh, Betty would make him a sandwich. He could, he could not only get a free haircut, he could get a free lunch too. 
It's not that we always had something good to eat, but he he knew probably in that cabinet there was a can of spam. We could have a fried spam, or he uh, always in the refrigerator unless we were just flat broke and happened to be out some Velveeta cheese or some eggs. You could have an egg sandwich, and Mike knew that. And if nothing else, peanut butter and jelly, free sandwich. Yeah, I could go on and on about Mike and Tommy, but that's enough. I just, this little 24 second video just reminded me of both of them, how much I cared for both of them, what good friends they were to me and Betty and our entire family. My kids knew them both well, uh, our entire lives. They're gone now. We miss them. Just blessed me to find this little video of him the other day. One other guy I wished was in the video had been George Gooden. He was another good friend of mine, just like them. Spent a lot of time at Betty Nair's house when we were young. Uh, George would come over and bring a brownie mix, watch Star Trek every week. Or he'd come over and bring a box of oats and want Betty to make some mud pies. <laughs> good friends, all of them. All of them gone now. I'm a hard times guy. You have a good day.